Hi guys, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, today I'm going to talk about the abilities that ghosts and spirits use in order to move things around and communicate with us. So, first off, we have to go back to when we're a child. When we're born, we have to relearn how to walk, talk, add up, subtract, how to think critically, how to work on a car so we learn the mechanics, manual, etc. Now, did you notice I just said relearn? Ooh, who picked that one up? Because what we're doing when we're born, we don't remember all our past lives. We don't remember all the abilities that we have when we're up in heaven, okay? Or as a ghost, if we were there before we went to heaven. So let me start off with some basic things to make you guys understand how they communicate with us, how they move things around. Let's just go there. You know when we say signs? Oh, I got a sign. My grandmother popped in today and I saw a feather. How does that happen? We can't understand it because we've forgotten that learned knowledge. So we must relearn it again in order to have that ability. Okay? It's like turning on that on switch in our brain. Beep! And they all come back on again. All right. So the first thing I want to go there with is can ghosts walk around in our houses? Yes, they can. Okay, so I've got a diagram here. So if you can imagine this has been three rooms, okay? Just imagine this is three rooms. Now, when you move into your house, okay? Let's just go back to 1940, this house was built, okay? There may be a front door here. And we've got a door here and a door there. So then someone can walk in and go through that door or they walk in that door and they go through this door, okay? So back in the 1940s, that's how the house was built. Then the owner-occupier of that house, they die in, say, 1960, okay? So they are familiar with this floor plan. They walk in the front door and they know that in this side's a bedroom and if they go into that side, that's the living room and this takes you back out to the kitchen or something, okay? So... They pass away in 1960. Someone else buys the house and what they do is they renovate. So what they do is they might move the front door to here. They put the door up here and they close all that in. So it's not there now. Right, I'm just making some crosses. They're not there now. So they make the doors up here. Okay, so this might be now the front door. You walk in. You walk through here, you can go up there, down there, or straight ahead through that door into there, right? So, when you've got a ghost in your house that walks through a wall, good chance is that that wall that they're walking through was once a doorway, okay? Or a window or something. So, people say, oh my God, the front door's here, but I keep seeing this ghost walking through this wall. Or they see them walking through the walls here because they're not there anymore. Because when that ghost was alive, there was a door there. But now they've made the doorway up here. The ghost doesn't know that. So they still walk through the opening that used to be there. Because remember, it's all energy. And even though in that doorway is no longer a doorway, they still see it as a doorway because the energy of the doorway is still there in their perception okay so that's why if you remodel a house you, you wall this back in and you make a doorway here the ghost will still walk through here like they used to into their bedroom okay so that's one of the simple things here that we can discuss right now okay now I want to go into how ghosts and spirits learn to move things around you know, we've all heard the things that people say, oh yeah, I was sitting at the table and the teapot <whistles> moved straight across the table. How do ghosts and spirits do that? First of all, spirits are the ones who go home. 
remember. Ghosts are the ones who stay earthbound. When we go home as a spirit, they work differently to a ghost who stays here. If we look at the movie Ghost with Steve, um, Patrick Swayze, he's on the subway talking to the subway ghost, as he was named in the credits, and the ghost said to him, you can't pick up the can anymore, you've got to use your mind. You get this energy within here and you burst it out of you to make the can move, okay? So ghosts can use that and that is what we call, I'm just going through my list here, it's called psychokinesis or telekinesis. That's the two names of it. So telekinesis, if you look it up, it says it's the ability to influence physical subsystems like an object without physical interaction moving the matter with the mind okay not the brain the mind so it's now our consciousness through that energy that we create we put it into the object or that physical system and we can move it across the table we don't physically hold it or touch it anymore because we don't have that physical body so we're using our energy to sway it across the table okay and that's why when you've got like par um what do we see poltergeist activity where 16 door cupboards all open instantaneously that ghost doesn't have to be there physically pulling out each of those drawers all he has to do is think about what he wants or she okay all we've got to think about is what we want i want every door in this room to now open and we concentrate on all of them at once and bang, all 16 doors will open at once. Okay, that's how they do it. It's through psychokinesis, which is called telekinesis. Okay, <clears throat> so then we go to another psychic ability. Let's talk about materialization. When spirits go to heaven, and they think about us through that energetic or emotional connection that they have to us, okay? The, the definition of this one says, it's the creation of objects, the appearance of matter from unknown sources. So when we've got a parent or a grandparent or our best friend has died and they've gone to heaven, when they want to give us that sign or that message that they're around, they can manifest through materialization that feather that comes floating down, right? Or uh, something else. So this is where I say to people, if you want a message from your loved one who's now in heaven, ask them to bring something specific, okay? I had a lady here once and she said, I want to receive a message from my mother. She died about two years ago. So I said to her, now remember, we live in Australia, okay? I said to her, ask for something that you would never usually find. So you know when you see it, it's definitely her and not just some random person dropping it. So I said, why don't you ask for a 10 cent US coin? which is called a dime, right? So she went home that night because she emailed me and she rang me a couple of times and she told me what happened. She said she went home after talking to me. She started thinking about her mother. So we've got that energetic, emotional attachment to her mother up in heaven. She was saying things like, Mom, I love you. Thank you so much. I love you. I miss you. Can you please give me a sign? Can you please send me a US 10 cent piece called a dime? So she went to work a couple of days later. And at work in the communal kitchen, she's got all these pigeonholes. So everyone's got their name on the pigeonhole in one of those like printed out name machine things. 
And where her pigeonhole is, you know, everyone's got their sugar, their coffee, their coffee mug or any other pills that they need through the day. Everyone's got their own little private um, pigeonhole. When she went to work in her specific pigeonhole on the top of it, you know, resting on the shelf near her coffee mug was a US 10 cent piece. So not only did they manifest through that materialization, they gave her what she wanted, but they also put it right into her pigeonhole. So it was a message specifically for her, okay? So why was it in her pigeonhole? Why wasn't it next to her bed? Why wasn't it in her car? We can never ask those questions because it's not our decision it was her mother's decision where she was going to put it, correct? Okay, I could say right now, everybody, think about right now where you'd put a dime to tell someone you know, and we'd all come up with the wrong, with the different answers, correct? So we can't have that expectation of saying, man, why did they put it there? I wouldn't have done that. I would have put it next to the bed so she saw it first thing in the morning. We can't say that because it was the mother's ultimate decision on where she placed that coin. But the very fact that she did shows us that this is real, okay? So telepathy, telepathy, okay? What is this one? This one is described as the ability to transmit or receive thoughts supernaturally. So how do we do it? We think about a person in our mind. It may be your de deceased grandmother. You think about them, you visualize them, you look at the photo of them. So we're now connecting through that emotional connection. Then you just have to close your eyes, visualize them and think about them and just talk to them. Now, I always say it's like talking to someone in a different room. So I'm here in my office today. Imagine that I'm talking to someone in my kitchen and I say, hey, I want a cup of coffee. Hey, I want a cup of coffee. But you don't say it here. You say it here. So we project those thoughts. So we're projecting our thoughts. And that's what we do. We don't have to direct it at a tree or a sky or a mountain range. As long as we're projecting it out there to the ether the universe, because that's a connection of how this all works, okay? So that's telepathy, okay? Then we go to remote viewing. Now, <clears throat> this is a psychic ability that we can all get, right? The same as the others that I've just said. Yes, we can materialize things, okay? So what is remote viewing? It is described as the ability to see a distant or unseen target using extrasensory perception, which is our ESP. Spirits use this all the time. <clears throat> I had to remember how to do it when I was up there. So I had to relearn it because I'd already known how to use it but because I came to Worth and I was Linda for 36 years before she died in 2001 and then I went home again, I had to relearn or should I say unlearn all the conditioning that Linda in this materialistic three-dimensional world had received. Okay, so when I was up there, I saw how we can remote view and it is extremely natural. Everybody in heaven does it. Okay, it's extremely natural. So in that case, it's a very frequent thing that everybody does. Because of the, um, um, oh, what's the word? Um, everything's panoramic up there. We can see behind our heads. We don't have to turn our head and look out of our peripheral. Everything up there is already connected as one. So when we remote view something, I did it. I was standing on the side of this mountain range and I was looking way off in the distance at other mountain ranges. Instantly, I was there on the mountain 
even though it could have been two or 300 miles away. Okay, it was a long distance, but I was remote viewing, and that's what they do. Spirits can remote view. Ghosts here can't. They've still got to physically take their energy around from one location to another. Okay, like Shelley, she came to my house for three days, but while she was here, she was moving things around with the brain and she didn't even know she was doing it. So I said to her, you know, are you aware that you're moving things with your brain because you can't pick up things with your hands anymore? And she just looked at me like, what? <laughs> so when we're in heaven, we can remote view. It's very, very easy to do and we do it every day. Day, when there's no days, because it's just constant time up there, Okay. It's constant present, I should say. There's no time. So here on Earth, when we look at remote viewing, it's training our brain or our mind to leave our body and go somewhere else. I had a exercise here one night, a development class. I had six people here and we all got a pen and paper like this. We all had a clipboard with a piece of paper on it. I gave everybody a pen. And I said, right, we're going to meditate for about 15 minutes. So we all just calm down. Breathe. Calm down. And I said, now we're all going to Hawaii. When you, all you got to do is close your eyes, visualize Hawaii. And you just think about Hawaii. And then your brain goes there. So I gave everyone the piece of paper and a pen and I said, when you're there, write down what you see. So we went through this exercise for about 20 minutes and there was a few people writing stuff down. So after about 20 minutes, I said, okay, guys, come back, come back to me. Wake up. Some other people started writing stuff down what they saw. So I said to the first person, what did you see? They said, oh, I was in this building, I'm looking at a window, and it was raining. The next person, they said, I'm in a car, driving down this road, but it was raining. We had the windscreen wipers going. The next person said, I'm in a bar, there's heaps of people there laughing, carrying on, dancing, drinking, singing, and we could hear the rain falling on the roof. The next person said, I'm in this house with some people where they're eating food, but it's raining, they can't go outside. So did you see what was common there? So I went onto Google Maps and I found the weather channel and I went over to Hawaii and guess what? Not only was it evening time, so it was about seven o'clock at night. So there you go, people would be out singing and dancing. We've got people having meals, but Hawaii was getting wet with rain. So this shows guys that we can learn these psychic abilities that are natural, natural abilities. So when we go home or we stay as a ghost, we can learn it now so we don't have to go through that process I went to and, and relearning it all when I get back there, okay? So I've gone through a simple couple of our psychic abilities today, okay? How ghosts and spirits learn to move things. It should be called... How do they relearn how to do things, yeah? Okay, because we can all learn it now because our psychic abilities are not only innate, which means natural, everybody can have them. So a special gift, how do we get them? I've done this many times. I look at my energy. It's already building. My eyes are already starting to water. Okay. So as, an, as a great gift for you all today, <clears throat> get yourself calm and collected, okay? I am going to offer you guys the opportunity to have any psychic ability that you want. How do we get them? So let's go through the process. First of all, we must know the warning. Do not ever get a psychic ability for monetary gain or for the benefit of yourself. That's a doozy. Don't 
ever do a psychic ability just to make money out of it. They won't give it to you. Second one, if it's only for your own good, like, oh yes, I want to see premonition so I can see what lotto numbers are coming tomorrow so I win a million dollars. They won't do it for you because you're doing it for the wrong reasons, okay? The right reasons is doing it for others, okay? It's got to be done out of the goodness of our heart. So once we get past that warning, first, first of all, we must believe that this is going to work. We've got to tell ourselves, I am a psychic. I am having psychic abilities. I have psychic abilities. I have the ability for tele telepathy or materialization or remote viewing. Okay? We must believe it. So that's the second one, right? Get past the warning. Believe it. Then we ask them. Remember how I said before? We sit calmly and it's like talking to someone in the kitchen. But instead of saying, hey, can you get me a glass of water? We ask them for what we want. So I'm going to pause with my little phrase that I'm about to say. Insert your own name. Insert the psychic ability that you want. Okay? Rewind the tape and listen to what I say again and say this yourselves. Okay? So I'll use Linda for my name, but insert your own. And I'm going to say premonition. Okay? But it could be any psychic ability that you want. I want mediumship, so I start seeing ghosts and spirits. Okay? It might be that one. Okay? Remote viewing, telepathy, psychokinesis and telekinesis, materialization. Okay? <clears throat> and then we've also got ergokinesis. Oh my gosh, didn't even mention that one. The ability to influence the movement of energy, such as electricity. Ghosts can do it. Spirits can do it. That's how they turn on the TV, through the electricity. That's how they can flatten your battery on your phone, through the electricity. Okay? So there's a lot of psychic abilities out there that we can offer. So let's go there. See how I just clapped three times? I'm clearing the air. If you want to do this later, rewind, say it yourself. Trust it, believe it, ask for it. And then the third thing is be grateful. Be grateful. So listen to how I say this, okay? Hello, good morning. Thank you so much. Are you here? I always ask her if she's here. I give her that yes, see, I've just heard yes, okay, in my mind. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much for all that you do for me. I am so blessed and I'm so honoured that you work through me for the betterment of others. Please know that what I ask today is for everybody watching my YouTube channel. It is for them to comprehend, to understand and to gain that knowledge of what they can innately do. If they do wish psychic abilities today, it is their free will. So please say yes, that it, this is your free will today, that what it will, what I do for you today is given with consent. Yes. Thank you so much. And please know that anyone listening to this video today, they do have a concern. They want to learn their innate abilities again. So today I'm going to ask on behalf of myself, Linda, I wish the ability to have premonition dreams. I wish to have these dreams so I may be able to assist others, to help others heal, to help them grow and learn more about what is in the universe. Thank you so much for bestowing these gifts onto me. So I will use them on your behalf, under your instructions, and most of all through the love of what you offer through the universe. Please know that I am not out for monetary gain. Please know that I know the warning of doing this for my own personal reason. But please give this to me so I can help others to be the best who they are also. Thank you so much. I am so grateful, so honoured and privileged to be a part of your universal makeup. Thank you so much for working through me and allowing me to have the gifts that I have, including premonition. So I may use these to help others. Thank you eternally. Amen. Namaste. However you bow, 
thank you. Who would have known it is so easy to obtain psychic abilities and all we have to do is ask for them? Huh. How often have you asked for your psychic abilities? How much have you given them thanks and grace saying thank you for the ability that I have? Thank you for allowing me to have that when I was a child. Please bring it back. You know, when I was about six, I turned off being a medium. I was under the sheets. I was just like that kid in um, I See Dead People movie, The Sixth Sense. I was that kid. I was under my blanket one night and I was saying, please don't, I don't want this. I don't want this anymore. Don't do it. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Um, (laughs) I always have to say that. Please don't take it away. So they did take it away for a couple of years. But then it was obvious that it was something that I was destined to do because it came back again. But they allowed me those couple of years from when I was about 10, um, 6 years old until I was about 11. So they gave me that grace to be a kid again. So I wasn't scared of it. So when I got it again at 12 when I went to the UK and I started seeing ghosts in castles, they knew then I was a little bit more mature, that I'd be able to handle it more. And so that's something that we must understand here. They only give us the abilities that we can handle, that we can comprehend and use for the better of others instead of our own selfish needs, okay? So I hope that's helped you all today, guys. I hope it explains a little bit. I am updating my ghost book because all these psychic abilities that I just spoke about, they're all in the book um, because it's an educational book, okay? So I hope that you like this one. And I hope you have a great day. Talk to you all soon. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.